。好，好，谢谢。好，大家好，今天有幸邀请到我们的 Selin 老师来呃给我们分享他的呃他的作品。那个 Selin 老师呢是毕业于 Cooper Union 啊、呃，然后现在呃任教于新加坡国立大学，还有他有自己的这个 practice O W M F。啊、um, ，还有一系列的建筑的艺术的作品，啊、uh, ，下面有请三林老师。Hello， Hi， 可以，大家好。OK， 我要 share screen 对吗？对 ，share screen。啊，你可以用英文。Uh, OK， 是，你可以用。OK。Right. 我把这个屏关了吧。我们现在走的 VPN。Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yes. um, I'll try to keep it short. Um, I'm going to talk about the evolution of formal languages, and just share some of the things that have uh influenced my thinking at the moment, and what uh I'm trying to do for my project. Um, so, uh, we come from me and Fan. We went to Cooper Union, and we come from a very formalistic background of architecture, I guess. Um, and then I think it's a school where we believe in um architecture as a language. So pretty much like text and or music. So there's a there's a language structure. There's grammar. There's vocab, and It's a syntax, right? In in your words, right? So, uh, the first I'm going to go through time, I guess. So the first part, um, very short in the classical era, we are just looking at buildings. You know, this is a really quick and short summary of all the buildings, and you can just by looking at the plans without visiting them. You pick up the languages of, you know, symmetry,、um, intersection of central axes, very pure geometry like circle, square, and、uh, rectangle, and it's actually very formal.、Uh, it's heavy, so these are the things that belong to the language of the classical era. I'm just going like really quick without really going into the differences between all these classical buildings. So, for example, when you you know the buildings are very symmetrical, so it's common to also draw half of the building this way. And then we that's when perspective is invented, and we are talking about really one point perspective here, something again very symmetrical and very stable. Um. Uh, we are looking at a very perfect and finite, unique world, and it's also very singular. So there's the perfect man, and the worldview is very singular. Right, we are looking at art that is also、uh, representing the reality as how you see it is optical, is representative of the real things what you see. Right, we are looking at、uh, even paintings that's also very realistic. So there's no abstraction. And of course, there's the famous、uh, Nolly plan, where you see everything in a, a kind of black and white, solid void、uh, relationship. Again, very stable. So it's either void or solid, one or zero. It's in a it's a binary world. And we also look at how Moretti, in 1950s, it, he tries to build the void. Of all these classical buildings, instead of building the building itself, so、uh, this void is actually represented by a solid wood model、uh, that really solidifies the building, right? And again, you can see there's a clear cut difference between solid and void. So these are the series of buildings of the classical, the void model of the classical churches, right? We are looking at section that is again. Uh, very finite and unique, and then、uh, on the left and on the right, you have Bunaleski's dome that starts to break、um, the classical model. Right, it goes into frame construction, and the geometry is a little bit different. That is catered to the frame construction. 
right? We also look at Bruno Lesky's uh, one point perspective, you know, starting to tilt and be one sided. Uh, and then we have towards the end of uh, 17th, 18th century, you have Bruno uh perspective. Um, it's it's like a slight departure from the previous painting where it's very uh, singular and this one you start to have multiple perspectives so there's a kind of slow transition where the world is changing right and then the second key period is modernism and maybe uh, to make to put it simply is actually Cartesian right with the start of our industrial revolution um, Corbusier uh, so you go from a very retrumian, retrumian man to a industrial mindset where things are mass produced and repeated. So you, would, you think about modular, you think about repetition, you think about mass production. And then from maybe a single perspective, you go into a two-point perspective where a lot of the viewpoints are from vehicles or people walking, right? Uh, and then there is the famous diagram of Domino House created by Kobu and also because of the use of concrete. So we go from something that is very solid and uh, solid void relationship in the classical period. Now you're going into this elemental Cartesian uh, language. And the idea of a uh, nine square and four square grid, uh, when we look at grid buildings uh, and Colin Rowe um, talking about how we can actually compare um, Palladio's classical building with Corbusier's building, um, the classical um, AB, AB grid. So the kind of grid organization is the same for the classical building and the Cartesian building, but the experience is entirely different. So the classical building, you have the experience being somewhat symmetrical. And then in the Kobu building, the grid stays, but you have a diagonal relationship in all his buildings. But then the, the idea of four square and nine square grid actually allows us to compare through time these two buildings that look completely different, right? And then, so how do you push the idea of nine square grid? Um, what's the nine square problem in, in school pedagogy, right? Uh, the classical four square grid building, uh, which is Villa Savoie by Corbusier. Um, so from art, from something very pictorial and realistic looking, we are going into um, something that is more abstract, something that's planar. How do you represent um, something 3D using just 2D planes, overlapping of 2D, 2D planes, right? And then the Cartesian uh, painting by Monjan. And then points my plane, right? So these are the languages that is uh, pretty much Cartesian. So maybe classical was more solid void volumetric. And then now you are going into a, a series of elements. And then of course, uh, pushing this language, and then you have John Haydock, Diamond House, um, and Miss Van Der Rohe. So from here onwards, you, um, the diagonal, the asymmetrical language, they start to appear, right? Whereas in the classical times, more or less symmetrical. And then we go into a series of uh, what I call informalism. The word is from uh, a structure engineer called Cecil Bauman, where he tries to um, explore non-Cartesian uh, structural form, right? So um, starting with uh, Rem Kuhas Jusil Library, where this um, the relationship between horizontal and vertical plane is also starting to fall apart. And this whole building then unrolls into one single section and journey. And uh, eventually it got built in a reduced version in theater library. And then looking at Bordeaux, you know, maybe we can use balancing instead of, so what else, right, other than grid, right? What, what non-Cartesian root methods can we think of? Or through Ito's pavilion, where um, he starts to use geometry, something very simple to create somewhat a uh, very complex uh, resultant form. But the structure is actually very simple by connecting uh, one third of a side of square to half of it. Um, 
And then in part de Lavillette, when class decide to use um, equation to create this park, uh, this is unbuilt. It's not the built one by Bernard Shumi, but he there's a kind of equation that then distribute all the amenities right uh, in a park, and there are five layers of amenities, and the resultant is a park that um, no two corners are the same, right? So we are looking at maybe art form here uh, by Solowit, where you know the the uh, it's a formula which then uh, the, the art form is created out of a formula instead of something very pictorial or plainer. Okay, so these are just different ways of non Cartesian things. And then uh, we go into the current uh, era where um, we are in now, where with the creation of uh, parametric. So I think I'm going to focus my, my thinking. Uh, on parametric form versus parametric space. So a few things happened um, in the 2000s, right? Uh, one is the construction of this building by Guggenheim, uh, by Frank Gehry in Guggenheim, right? Uh, it's the first time the facade is being uh, mass customized. So uh, the, the program Cartier kind of helped him resolve mass customization uh, is possible for the first time. Uh, not mass production, right? So this building and it's an era where a lot of buildings are required for you know the icons to create like an icon for the city, okay? But then if we look at this plan of this uh, building, we can see that um, the structure or the inside is kind of like subdivided or if you want the, the experience of that effort, right, it's minimal to the Places near facade building, right? And then, um, so there is a, and then I uh, saw this construction image of this building by Zaha Hadid in Azerbaijan, right? So this is the construction photo, and then uh, it's, still, it's very scary how it, on the inside, the structure itself is not much different from Domino House. So all the per metric thinking is going into making a form that you view from outside, right? It's not actually hitting the structure at the structural level. So it's like a, a, a elephant skeleton in a fancy skin, right? So uh, this is one incident where I start thinking about um, the, the structure of parametric system, right? And then, so everyone, I think, is trying to crack um, this this move, right, um, from this uh, philosophical move from the old to something that uh, Deleuze talked about in a thousand settle, right? So what is topological? What is some, to go from a centralized system to something decentralized and distributed, right, to a rhizome format? Uh, so, and then another building. So this Yang building uh, in, in San Francisco by Herzog and De Meron. So again, the facade has 7,000 panels of different facades. And all the uh, effort is going into fabricating all these facades. Uh, and then uh, I started, I analyzed this building, I think, in school. And, but looking at the space itself and thinking about how we can conceptualize space in the same way Right, so in the classical period, if you remember the Moretti model, it's very much solid, right? And then here, trying to look at the space in a series of uh, dynamic forces. So the first one is kind of like a compression. So the space is kind of conceived by compression, and then also a series of tension, uh, intersection, and elastic intersections. So that's the second force, and then the third one is shear. And this shear force actually kind of justify the form of the shear tower that they have, which is the tower over here, right? So I started thinking about, oh, maybe what, if we then solidify all the spaces and we kind of concentrate on spaces, 
can we apply the same kind of language and theory that we have? And then, um, so uh, I am Malaysian practicing in Singapore. So the whole Cooper education is very, very uh, Western to me. And when I came back after graduation, there is um, a lot of conflict with the environment, which is pretty much Asian. And one of the conflict came from a trip to Sri Lanka and looking at this, the third lane, uh, Jeffrey Bauer house is a very vernacular house, right? But the whole, there's a lot of maybe if you want ad hoc or grammar mistakes in, in this house, but then the experience itself is like a maze, right? So you can spend many, many hours in this house and uh, a lot of the strategies are not structured but the whole experience is very dynamic and it's impossible to photograph or even film, right? So, uh, so what is it? I'm like uh, very disturbed by a lot of the grammar mistakes that this house has, right? But the experience itself um, is something else, right? Something more, something very dynamic and topological. So yeah, this photo doesn't do justice, but the whole, Thing is like a maze, it's like a slum that you can then spend many, many hours in, right? So I'm trying, like, how do you create a slum? How do you create something like that? But then the form is actually very vernacular. It doesn't, the house doesn't look any different from other uh, local houses in Sri Lanka, right? Uh, and then I saw this building by Toro Ito, the Sendai Media Tech, and you kind of see that he's trying to, again, break the domino house, right, by changing some of this uh, structure. So this, this building was built and I'm looking at the space that is created that is a bit of like a free terrain. And then also I did a bit of investigation in uh, the Eastern tradition, right? This is um, a, a shrine from Japan. Uh, one of the most important shrines, and I realized that this is a four square grid building, which is very different from the Western church building. There is always going to be nine square grid, whether it's a space in the center and you go down the center. But in the Eastern, um, uh, Eastern tradition, maybe you start with a four square, right? And that is in the tradition itself. And then if I look a bit more and then reading this book about how the heating system uh, differs uh, in the east and in the west so in the west maybe you try to aircon the whole entire place but for this one the heating is actually this is actually a heating pot for just your hand right so it's kind of like acupuncture where you just if you are cold then you just heat up your hand instead of like heating up the whole room um, and then the kotatsu, where you also just heat up your legs instead of the whole room. So this kind of um, Eastern idea is in is what we are exposed to in the East, right? And I'm trying to reconcile this conflict between my education and my actual environment. And then also visiting some castles and palaces in Japan, we realize that all this imperial uh, classical Asian architecture, they start with asymmetry and looking at Katsura uh, Palace, there's no symmetry. So it's something that is very organic and very dynamic, right? So also then look at Sana's 21st century museum and how actually they form, right? They look at all these spaces, it's like a diversity of spaces, right? Instead of black and white or one or two spaces. And these are like ecosystem of spaces where you have a great variety of spaces. Although the form and the material may look very simple. Um, another project by uh, Ishizawa, so came around that time. So again, even in a small home, you can try to provide something that is more topological. So in terms of, you are not looking at form that looks like is created out of parametric software, but we are looking at space that then forms a topology of spaces and ecosystem of spaces. Um, but 
actually the construction is very simple, right? Uh, another recently completed building by so Ito, sorry, it's in Mexico, not Taiwan. Right, so using some clever um, system to create a space that's really complex. And this is, and then so I started thinking about what is um, parametric space instead of form? How can we make um, very complex space but using very simple structure? And this project, uh, White Yu by Ito Ito in the 1976, right? It's a, just a simple band, but you can see how it's, uh, in terms of uh, space itself, it's, it's a diversity and seamless kind of space. So looking at this thread of uh, intervention, he then you know, built this Taichung Metropolis Opera House that's in the same idea. So you break, you are adding a new kind of language instead of Cartesian or something that's very defined, you have a very topological space, right? So this, uh, in the same kind of idea, the Hiroshi Sanju Museum by Isana. I think they explore or the same I go to and also Rolex, right? But okay, and then I guess um the last project is by uh, Ishigami where he created um a forest of all these columns. Right, and this is allowed. This everything is customized, but from the outside, I think this is another image that I started thinking how um, it's not about how the building looks like or what, but it's about topological space. And because the whole environment is so much like nature or like the forest, and then you can basically spend a lot of time inside and inhabit it in multiple ways that you want. Okay, and then looking at art again, uh, during this era, and there's like weather project like this where they start to go into space and in material quality. Um, whether it's James Turrell manipulating light or uh, Eliasson Olafur trying to recreate a kind of atmosphere. So I guess, um, that's what currently I'm interested in exploring, like something that is very simple, uh, repetitive, or easier to construct, but what can then give us more topological space. So if form doesn't follow function, maybe it's going to follow variance, right? And there's a difference between um, parametric form and space. And Maybe it's trying to create a diversity of environment, like this artwork. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so some of the projects that we have started to try to explore using very uh, regular system, but trying to create a diversity of spaces. Uh, for this is a proposal for for a museum, and then looking at how we can create this spectrum of spaces and how we can inhabit it. Uh, this is another proposal for a, for a childcare, uh, not childcare, like a, a home, like a children's home, right? Just using um, a few modules, three modules. We try to create and try to make a diversity of spaces using very simple form. So that's about, that's all. Okay, thank you for yep. the um, great project presentation. It's really wonderful that you um, 
you know, you bring together like all the examples that you bring, you talk about from classical to modern to um, typological space. So can I say what you're working on is typological topography or typological typography? Is that an accurate um, summary of your work? Uh, I'm trying to work on uh, topological space, but using very simple form because um, I don't know whether type applies to me. So I don't know, uh, from my understanding of type, type is related to a certain function. And here I'm not thinking about function, it's just really trying to create uh, uh, an ecosystem of spaces which then you can inhabit. So trying to detach a little bit function from the form itself, yeah. Okay, I see. Um, can you be a little bit more explicit about the typological, uh, topological, sorry, topological mm -hmm. space in the uh, vernacular architecture, like Jeffrey Bauer's architecture or, um, or Le Corbusier's house? Okay, so um, from my own, we're all trying to define topological in different ways, I guess, right, in this era. But from what, for me, topological means um, a, a kind of spectrum, right, of space. It's almost like a forest where you have a wide variety of space, right? So if classical space is only black and white, one or zero, you have at most two types, two or three types of space. And then maybe in Corbusier's, right, maybe you are to increase it to maybe five or six types, right? But then in a topological or more parametric space, you, you have a spectrum, right? Maybe 30, maybe 100. It's a bit like slums, right? So I think what I'm really interested in is like, how do we, why, you know, slums is all not, create, not planned, right? It's self-created. But how do we create slums, the kind of environment where you can go in multiple times and there's a lot of diversity of spaces and you keep visiting and multiple paths. How do we create this kind of system but using very simple um, form? Okay. So, so, so to, to me, that is, uh, that is something that is um, closer to, how to say, it's like closer to a, to a forest, right? Closer to nature where, where the, the variety is there. Whereas in maybe in a in a Corbusier, in a mass production, domino house kind of production, you get repetition, right? So a, a, a lot of repeated spaces, no matter where you go, it looks like the building is different, but actually the experience is the same inside, right? Because it's repeated and the variety of spaces is not diverse enough. Okay, so from what I understood, what you were saying is um, the space inside um, Jeffrey Bauer's house or Le Corbusier's house is non-descriptive. Non -descriptive. So you can have multiple readings when you visit yes. the space. And um, that's what distinguish a topological vernacular from a vernacular vernacular, yes. right? So how would, you, um, how would you tell whether it's, say we have topological form inside a building. So how would you tell whether it's structure or whether it's only form? Well, I, I guess if it's only form, it will be something that is optical that maybe you can only see from outside. It's mm -hmm. not at a structural level. It's more at an optical level. So a little bit like the, the early, when, when all this parametric design uh, just started in the year 2000, Right. It doesn't really affect the structure inside. It's really just a skin. It's just an envelope. So I guess, yeah, I guess that's the, whereas um, I guess what Ito and uh, Ishigami, all these people they are trying to do is the other way around, right? It's not so much about how the building looks like from the outside, but the, the structure, like the Taichung Opera House, they really change the spaces you have within the building. 
Okay, so um, then um, we talked a little bit about um, Bilbao Museum, right? Yeah. If we if we look at Bilbao Museum three from three scales, um, does it have a typological relation in the urban scale? I mean, like in the architectural scale, maybe it has a typological form. Yeah. But what about the the detail scale? Because beneath what the the, the fancy the fancy skin, it's still um, construction technique of uh, wood studs or wood stud system. Yeah. So how do yeah. You interpret how does typological relation or typological space come into both urban architecture and detail scale? I guess this is more at a detail uh, scale because it's the start of parametric uh, design, right? Where they just apply it to the facade detailing, right? But in terms of the space itself, at a building level, it's still pretty much uh, like, or worse than what we had before. It's just, uh, uh, just probably subdivision of spaces inside the building. And then in terms of, uh, yeah, but then, I mean, we, but this is like the start of the digital uh, design, right? Which, uh, so I don't know, like in terms of urban, we are also looking at this river here. It's quite, um, it's still quite classical in a way. You just go, it's a linear form that you go along the river, right? But then maybe at an urban scale, um, you, I don't know, how do we break away from zoning, from axis, from the old way of planning, right? How do we go into uh, the nomad, the nomadic territory that Deleuze talked about, right? Or the, the, the Asian philosophy where it's about acupuncture, right? Certain points that you then, so it's not a big stroke planning, it's not an axis, it's not a zoning, but it's about clearing um, certain points in in a city. So, uh, I mean, for me, it's just a uh, thinking process. It's like, how, how can we widen the scope of all this philosophical thinking, right? Like, it's not, yeah, beyond yes. this optical. So, I'm interested. I, I don't know. I don't have an answer, like, but at least in practice and in studio, we are trying to think about that and how else to do urban planning, how else to do um, buildings, right? That um, how do you create a more diverse experience? Because I don't know, maybe in Singapore, um, the practice here or the, the environment, the urban environment here, we have 80% that is just repeated buildings, right? It's, it's kind of homogeneous. And so then what do we do, right? How do we, if we, we can't, not every building can be like Bilbao. Like you don't need that many iconic buildings or you don't have the budget for it. So how, how do we create some really diverse spaces but using very simple form, right? That is buildable, that then you can change, really change the environment of a city. So when I visited um, buildings like Jeffrey Bawa and things like that, buildings like that that we never talk about in school because Really, if you want to analyze the Bawa building, right, it's like you will never find green, you know, you will have a really odd corner somewhere, right? It's ad hoc if you want, right? But this house, I thought, you know, it's just a house, but going inside, like spend uh, one whole day in this, in this place, right? And it's like, what is it, right? How come the rational way of uh, us, what we learn from school, can't be applied here, but yet this is very disturbing, yet very fascinating, right? Because of the, the variety that is available in this house. So for, at least for me, I'm interested in uh, creating this, right? creating this kind of diversity of uh, space, which I call topological space, but in a very simple form, yeah. So how, how does... Uh -huh. uh, so how does the uh, Drew Deleuze rhizome come into place? How does it fit Sorry, into which one? The rhizome, the Drew, Drew Deleuze rhizome, a thousand plateau. How does well, it this, come in? So this is a ph philosophical idea, right? About how there's non-hierarchical um, 
structure and then he talks about this nomadic phase right the other right not if it's not the city the sedentary civilization something very stable and then when you go to all this kind of nomadic territory maybe you look at stars you know you look at this kind of similar plateau where there is variation but not really uh, more striation right but it's it's a flow so it's pretty much nature right like this diversity of uh, spaces but not so segregated smooth space I, I to be honest I, I don't know so this is the philosophical background the difference between something that is very structured to something that is very non-structured but if it's non-structured then it's kind of anti what we have learned right uh, but so how do you create non-structured but uh, architecture and construction wants to be structured right if uh, we can't I don't know at least in Singapore we don't need, we don't have that many opportunity to create iconic buildings right then how do I find something that is buildable but yet can offer a kind of diversity of spaces uh, the smooth space like what the Lewis talk about or what this Jeffrey Bauer house has to offer I don't know. I'm still, still exploring. You're but, working on it. <laughs> yeah, working on it and trying different ways because, yeah, we can make crazy form, which will then result in um, really different spaces. But a lot of the time, the projects, uh, the, the budget just doesn't allow for it, right? But because like like in order like Domino House is now the predominant diagram, right, for most of the projects, right? But it's it's repeated. It's like every building is the same. Then, uh, what do we do? That's the that's the question. Yeah. Okay. One last question. So, how do you come to words about topological space? What makes it topological? Is it space? Is it light? Is it the opening, or is it circulation, or structure? What makes it in topological topological space? Actually, sorry. Mm -hmm. Space now, okay, at least in the studio and what we are trying to do is, okay, so then you create a diversity of uh, spaces, right? Then maybe it's down to environment because I'm trying to detach the thinking from the function itself. What is the program of the space, okay? Is, uh, whether it's a toilet, whether it's a dining room, it doesn't matter. Just trying to create a range of spaces. And to me, maybe what really defines is wind, sun, rain. I don't know whether we can get away from that. So uh, at least the past few projects that we are exploring, we are just uh, concerned with providing a range of environments based on wind, sun, and rain, and proportion and dimension, not function. So within, so let's say like if it's a building of uh, you have you have um, office and then you have residential or things like that. Um, every one of this so-called function can inhabit a range of spaces. So I guess what you're saying is topological is actually an abstract relation, an yes. abstract relationship that's, you know, um, versus partition group. Yes. Hello. Hello. So Hello, I couldn't hear, I can't hear. Hello. Hello.
Hello. Hello. Hello. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 So my, um, you know, I'm interested in how would you push the question into the detail scale? Like what you're doing is go beyond wood frame structure, wood frame construction, steel construction or current wall or any construction system that we have before and invent a new system that Super logical. All right, any more questions? Students? Anybody have questions? Can ask me now? I got a question. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, thank you for lecture, Professor Yang. And can you can you turn back to the picture of Zaha Hadid that that uh, the construction photograph of Zaha Hadid's building? This one? Uh, the the photograph of construction period of Zaha Hadid this building. That's uh, I don't know its name. It's uh, it's Can in you the. See? Uh, yeah, Is this it one. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Well, um, I think although this one is uh, it's 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 structure or its system is really like the Domino House, but uh, I also see a really conflict and. I see a comparison between the dynamic, the um, nonlinear form with the Cartesian and uh, domino house structure. So why don't you say this kind of conflict is also a, a new topology? Maybe because I also see a lot of variations in this space. You can see on the, maybe on top of it, there is a really like a, strange space and it's i think it's a, like a conflict so what, what do you think yeah. about it? well it's a conflict and sometimes we have to do that but i'm just looking at you know when i look at buildings and then i analyze and i ask myself what else i want to do more right and how do i want to push this so not saying like you know sometimes you have to do this but um to push your thinking then um, when I saw this and I'm like, why can't this whole building be like that, right? A bit more topological. Then you have to see the potential of parametric, not just um, focusing on a uh, cladding panel. Of course, this is not like the best Zaha Hadid project, right? But yeah. it was this construction photo that um, started me thinking, right? It's like how... Uh, well, if parametric is not something that you just use to resolve a kind of cladding, what does parametric organization language or structure mean, right? Can it be more spatial? So all these things happen maybe right after my graduation and then, you know, also going to the Jeffrey Bauer house. It's like, I, I'm, I have conflict, right? It's like I try to reconcile because and then there's this house that looks to me really vernacular and nothing interesting going on. And then if I look at the plan, I don't even see any four square or nine square grid. It's just a mess, right? It's almost like somebody say, okay, this corner, I want to do this. And this corner, I decide to have a skylight. This corner, I want to do that, right? It's a mess to me. But then I somehow spend a lot of time there and there's something, right? Why? What is that? What is this that is? It's like, and then it's like going to slums, right? It's like going uh, to a medieval city where you wander and things like that. So I guess the, I don't know, at least in Singapore, I think our fabric, our urban fabric is losing this kind of quality, if you want. It's, everything is flattened. It's kind of repeated. So all, encounter with all these projects and 
uh, travel, uh, the conflict between uh, school and, and my environment, yeah, led me to thinking about this. So, yeah, there, there will always be conflict when you, when you put two systems together. But I'm talking about looking at what's the potential of this parametric system. Yeah. To picking up on that question, how would we define the difference between parametric or topological with organic? Is it the same thing or we have different definitions in architecture? I think organic doesn't have a structure or um, self grow rhizome. Well, then I think it's the, the system, the relation, the intensive relationship behind the system. It's not just a shape. So if you want to say rhizome is organic, I think we are not talking about it being, you know, like having life is not that aspect, but what is the, the logic of the growth, right? Like right. for like you study, yeah, the pattern, like you study cloud form formation, that's organic to me. But I think we are interested in the mathematical relation behind the cloud formation. So we are not looking at the shape of the cloud, but we are looking at the conditions where the clouds form, right? The, the, the moisture content has to be right and things like that. So that relationship to me um, is topological, but you can say maybe the shape, the outline of the cloud is organic. I don't know. It's all words to me. Yeah. Okay, good. More questions, students? Anybody? Wu Pei, Wu Pei, when do I do? Can you use Chinese? Can you? Can you? But I, my answer is not very good. Is the end of the uh, that that is that plan? I don't know very well. 那个 grid 是怎么选择的？就是它是有很多的那个方块，然后组成一种那个 topological 的形。但是它的那个，呃，就是每个方块，就是为什么选择这个方块的形状，然后它的那个大小又是如何选择，我就不是特别懂。你是说，呃，最后这几个方案吗？对。哦，这个是。Uh, so what I said, I'm trying to use grids, right? Different grids because that is something that is within budget and cost. This is a competition entry. So, and then I'm trying to see if I vary just a few grids and put together, put them together in a different way. Can I create a more, uh, can I get more variety of spaces at the end? So, I guess the key is to have, how do I create a more variety of spaces, but using very simple form and structure at this moment. But uh, that's why a lot of these projects, they are, uh, it's quite real, the budget is real. So if we don't try to do something, then it will just be a very, it will just be a typical domino house building, right? But yet, um, usually we don't have the budget to go into like to even go make something like what Ito has done for for let me see like like for Taichung Library yeah usually it's just I don't know at this point like the, at least the projects I get uh, they are all quite limited in budget or we can't do this yet yeah but I don't know this is just the first few attempts, right, that uh, I'm trying to do, yeah. Good, very good. Uh, Shen Zhongyu, Shen Zhongyu, ask a question. I have not thought about the question. Dong Xiao, Dong Xiao, ask a question. Uh, 
呃，我也想用中文问一下，呃，就是，呃，也是在比较后面的部分，呃，能把能把图片放到后面吗？对我，我想问一下，呃，一百四十五这张图，对，然后他，呃，其。就是老师刚才讲到用简单的，呃，形体，然后呃，组合成一种复杂的空间感受。我想问一下，呃，这种这种形体它的原型是从哪里找到的一种，呃，可以说灵、啊、灵感吧？对，这个其实是啊、呃、材料，所以它的那个什么怎么说那个模是一样的，就是一个很很。很普通的一个啊、uh, cylinder， 可是因为它的材料是 latex， 所以当它它有点软，所以当它把那个模型拆掉的时候，它每个会有不同的形状出来。所以这个是到现在我没有办法达到的。可是，呃，我就是在建筑层次还没有办法达到。可是这个这个这个对我来说很有趣，是因为这样，所以它不是故意把每一个形状。哦，你应该是这样，你应该是这样，你应该是这样，对吗？所以它的那个模型，如果我们因为呃 ，concrete 或泥土也是用模型吧，对不对？所以是那个模那个形是一样，可是当你拆掉的时候，它就开始有一点不同的感觉。所以这个东西我还不懂怎么怎么、呃、怎么 apply， right？ 到现在我还是在想这些问题，所以这些全部是我在想的问题。希望有一天，有一天我可可以做到建筑成员。嗯，好。所以你可以看这个这个这个画这个呃画家吧，还是 sculptor， 他有很多都是类似这样，他也有长方形的，做那个模型是一样，可是出来的东西就是很多不同不同，不像之前，因为他之前啊、呃、那些好像 solo 这些做的，他的啊、呃、我给你看一个图。它是非常有呃理性啊，非常 rational 的，呃，说，这个是差不多前一代的人吧，所以你其实你可以想象的，就可以做出来的是差不多一样，它就是少，它它不会有 variation 的，这些东西是 computer 可能可以帮你。generate 出来的 option， 它没有材料，所以他他想的是这样，他拿掉那个模型之后，他还是一样的。就、so, 我不知道这个东西把它 translate 成建筑是怎么样，对，对我来说很有趣。对，好，张张亚佩，张亚佩问一个问题。呃，能听到吗？我我也还是用中文吧，因为。今天脑子不太好用，就是啊、呃，我也想，就我就接着刚刚懂，笑了吧，就是就是因为刚好就是这个周末也看了一点，就是就是艾利亚松就是之类的东西，然后我比较好奇，就是像这种就是就是就是它毕竟是一个，呃，虽然就比如说就是就比如说他们，虽然我这呃也不一定是艾利亚松本人，就是包括就是一些就是很图。比如说，他们会停留在一些比较，就是比较艺术方面探讨，有有时候仅仅是一些形式上的东西，或者是土底关系上的东西。但是，就是这些，就是这些东西，就我我觉得他，怎么说我我现在比较就是迷茫，就是该怎么把就是一些你从这些这些艺术作品上看到的一些感受，就是转移到建筑上去。我我其实蛮好奇这件事情。因为感觉就是很多时候手法还是比较太过于简单，然后很多很微妙的感受也没有表达出来。对，就从永远那个艺术那些都会可能比建筑先走一步嘛，就我也没有答案，我也不知道。可是，对，有些这些就很有趣，因为它这个是在 Google 里。他只是用光，他就可以把整个空间改掉。或者你去看一些呃，好像大拿的这个建筑，其实我我非常喜欢，我觉得它比 Rolex 还成功。他
它没有线的，它整个空间它完全没有一个 sharp shadow 或者是直线的，或者是你去呃它的 Tashima Museum 在也是在日本，你进到去你想要画画画它的空间，你没有办法画一条直线或者是一个 sharp shadow， 就我觉得有一些这种空间好像是呃建筑怎么说？建筑太硬了，就是 traditional architecture 太 hard line， you know。So some of this experience， 可是是呃刚刚开始这些人这些这些建筑师他们开始有了，所以我觉得这种空间很怎么说，我也不知道，我也不知道那个 direct translation 是什么，可是。呃，可能看这几个作品吧，会有会有一点希望。我不知道。好，会烧，会烧有问题吗？呃，那唐唐瑞尚。呃，老师好，那个我也用中文说一下我的问题吧。其实我的疑惑点比较在，因为老老师是想塑造一种，就是，呃，呃，就是以往的建筑师都只能用那种曲线来做的东西，然后你想用一个简单的形体来把它塑造出来，是，我觉得这个可能主要矛盾点在于那个建造的难易性，就可能说，呃。如果用传统的那种，就是正方形的那种体块来建造的话，就是这种这种拓扑空间，我觉得它可能还是难以体现出一种您说的那种软的，就是非硬性的那种感觉。嗯、呃，呃，但我我我我的想法是，就能不能用呃材料或者说是呃呃一种表面看上去的。那种触底让它变得软一点。对，有有完全完全正确。可是对，所以所以现在我们我才只是做到这些比较硬的，还没有，所以希望希望有一天会会有这个东西出现。可是到目前为止还没有，还没有。就还是没有没有能举出来。还没有还还没有还没有还没有举出来的例子。因为不知道，可能呃，希望吧，希望未来几年。<笑>现在只是一直在这个一直在这个方块里面打转，因为如果不是的话，就是就是这样，因为那个 project 的那个 budget 还是什么，还是要考虑，所以我没办法，可能要有机会的话，要找一个比较小的项目，有办法做这个东西的。呃，到现在为止还没有。就完全正确，对。好，就就祥峰。老师就是这，您您就是分享了这几个案例，然后一直就是让我也有一个疑问，然后我其实一直都比较感兴趣的就是，这些比较有趣或者说比较复杂的形式，它的生成以后，然后才有的功能，感觉就是。那么就是这种形式为形式先生成还是功能先安排这种矛盾，我就一直比较疑惑。就是感觉这种有有趣的形式，那么功能就可能会多半就会先服从于它，嗯、然后才生成。嗯，所以我就比较疑惑这种先后顺序，或者说就是谁优先这种问题。对它，它一定有限制，所以我。要，所以怎么说？呃，所以有很多 project 可能没有办法达到。可是如果有机会的话，我们要做什么？我觉得可能我们在一个，在一个哦呃一个我们做的作品可能有九十五八天，都是一个在一个比较现实的状态下操作的。可是如果有五八天，如果你有机会的话。你会想要做什么？所以我觉得那个是一个，呃，每个建筑师应该想的问题。可是
、呃，可是呃很现实啊，没有办法。通常九十五八千，我们都必须，我们都必须可能做这个，真的，对吗？可是，所以学校啊，参加比赛啊，这些东西有些比较重要，所以他一定会。对啊，它的功能性会减少，可是，呃，你要拿捏啊，可能可能不需要一百八千都功能性吧，对不对？对我来说，建筑就是环境，是你整个大环境，所以你要把怎么把这个大环境做成有更多种不同样的空间，让你的城市才会比较有趣。所以你看一些，嗯。比较古老的城市，呃，看一些那些什么 medieval towns， 呃，呃，你去印度，你进去他们的那些 slums， slums 怎么说？对不对 ？slums， 呃，贫民窟啊，还是去南美洲这些贫民窟，这些空间非常有趣，然后现在很难在大城市找到，然后你怎么把这些空间重新？你怎么有这种空间？可是它不是一个。上，因为，呃，上是有问题啊，这些东西，我不懂功能，所以功能跟这种形体永远都会有冲突的。我看是一个尺寸的拿捏，对。李李俊宏，呃，老师好，老师好，那个我想就是问一下，就是。呃，我您说的在您这个就是用简易，呃，简易的这种呃结构啊，或者说一种方式形成空间的过程中，就是，呃，就是比如说呃，时尚纯野建筑，它对于环境虽然它是用了一种呃比较就是很单一的这样一个呃材质，但是实际上它是对于这个环境的材质有一种对应的隐喻的，那就是。呃，我在想，就是如果就是通过一种就是拓扑的提取，使这个结构简单化，再次把它复杂以后，它这种就是如何再次处理对于呃环境的这样一个材，就是环境本体材质的应对，或者说是就是会不会把这个呃，由于空间的，就是就是处理手法呃可能会就是。拓扑化了以后，会把这个材质的隐喻给消解掉，或者什么？呃，可以可以再解释你的问题一下。呃，就是就是我啊、呃，就我想想怎么简单，就是呃，如何就是如何通过这种就是空间的再塑造吧，而、呃、使这个。就是材，就是您，就是您怎么考虑材，就是材质对于这个，呃，你这样一个，就是由拓扑化形成的空间，然后的影响吧、嗯。呃，材质肯定有影响的，我觉得。可是啊，那个，那个是一个怎么说？所以这个他还是在用那个钢铁嘛。可是如果到了那个，好像。呃，这个一多的这个，它其实还是 concrete， 可是他们用了那个技术，在这边你看到，其实这个是那些建呃，怎么说 retaining wall 在的一个技术，所以我材材质一定有影响，只是呃，怎么说，最好的话以后，我不知道将来希望有一天我可以，也是在这个领域。可以有一些呃发展，可是到现在为止还是没有，还是想的都还是一些现有的呃技术跟材料，对，还没有办法研发到好像呃有新的材料还是什么的，到目前还没有，可是希望可以往这方面走，就好像可以接近做一些类似这样的东西。好，呃，很好的问题哦，啊，很好的问题，好，师傅，对，嗯，嗯，但是没有会消吗？问题
可以补充？好吧，你问吧。就是我想问一下老师，就是，呃，建筑的空间好像有这样一种朝拓扑空间转化的一种趋势。那我想问，就这种趋势的一种内在的动力是什么？就是他为什么会朝着这个方向去发展？哦，为什么会想突破到这个？是吧？哦，对，是这样因为啊，怎么说？呃，是一个可能是一个 philosophy 的演变吧。要怎么答呢？因为以前的东西都已经做了，大家都也做的太好了，所以现在它这个是一个新的 structure 的一个概念，外种，对吧？而且其实跟现在很多的怎么说，好像。那些呃什么恐怖分子 ，guerrilla warfare 或者是 terrorist attack， 很多这种形式，其实它是一个 r i s o m i c structure， 它不是一个啊、呃、有一个政府，然后这样子 top down 这个 centralized 的一个 system， 所以其实世界是走向一个 r i s o m i c structure， 就好像现在的那个呃这个 virus 的怎么 virus 怎么说、啊？这个这个 coronavirus 的这个东西也是一个这种 structure， 可是传统上我们那个 centralized structure 比较容易学习，比较容易明白，所以我们的社会其实是好像你他要啊、呃、政治嘛 politics， 他要管人，所以他一定是这种 centralized structure， 可是在这个世界上其实还有一种。啊，这个 distributed structure， 对吧？可是这个还没有被研发，还没有被人家探讨，所以这个是我们我看到的 potential。而且你可以看到，呃，有因为有 internet， 因为有很多这些东西，其实世界已经走向一个一个这种，就好像啊、呃、钱吧，就是一个很传统的一个 bank 银行的一个系统，现在已经变成是 bitcoin， 是一种 crypto。呃、uh, ，currency 大家互相认证，所以这种这个 i， 所以这个是一个 philosophy concept， 世界会，我们的生活也变成这样。以前可能你有一个，你在一个地方还是什么的，然后现在也是有一种 multiple points， 或者是你呃说 GPS，GPS GPS 也是一个很 centralized 以前的一个系统，现在有那种啊、呃、现在的定位。就是卫星嘛，从 top down 只有一点，然后现在的定位是互相的，就好像你看那个香港的那些抗战争啊，说那个抗议示威，他们是用 Bluetooth 大家来定位的，所以很多是一种 philosophy 吧，我觉得，对，还有跟我们的现在的大环境的一个现象。非常好，非常好的问题哦，杜尔基娜。好，老师你好。嗯，其实就是我对这张图就很感兴趣，因为其实感觉这个东西就是跟我之前做的一个呆观很像，就是一些，就是可以理解说是一种本来是一种中心化的结构，然后慢慢的向一种非中心化的网状体一一种。转变，那你怎么看这个东西转换到建筑上面、空间上面，会有什么样的一些变化？所以，所以在建筑上面，我希望那个空间是这样的，就是像呃比较非非中心化的空间。可是建筑毕竟要建，所以它是跟那个啊啊、呃呃、怎么说 construction， 它跟 construction， 它跟一些啊、呃、钱。有关，还有跟技术，这三这三种东西，不想要有这个 system， 他想要一个中心化或者是一个 repeated， 就好像 domino house， 就好像那个，他要他要这样的，他希望这样子才会便宜，才会容易建，他希望，所以这个跟那个呃，跟那个这个 distributed system 是有冲突的，所以如果我们不可以。所以我在想，如果那个空间可以是这样，可是那个
那个 form 那个 construction 可以很简单的话，这样你才可以普及化，不是整个城市只有一间建筑是扎尔哈迪这种标志性的建筑，可是，一般每天九十九八千，我们还是活在一个很很 boring、很 homogeneous 的一个 repeated domino house 的城市里面，所以这个就是难难在这个 topological 的地方。对，因为毕竟 ，architecture 开始，它开始有一个地的概念，在法国，对吧？以前是没有，因为以前你的地啊、呃、多过人嘛。可是当人口越来越多，你就要开始划分那个地，划分界限。所以这个想法开始就已经不是 topological 了，它就它就已经奠定了一个非常非常 centralized， 非常非常这种。Clear cut 的包局这种这种概念，所以我们城市是这个的后遗症。所以在 The l o s e 如果你读 The l o s e 的话，他会说城市就是那种 sedentary， 就是我们一般的城市跟啊、呃、nomad nomadic 城市游民啊游牧民族的那些空间非常不一样。因为呃我们一般的城市是关于统治。关于啊、呃、管理，所以它是非常分隔的。可是当你去到那个 nomadic 的空间，它必须要跑啊，它必须要跑到遥远去找那个水、找水源、找食物什么的东西。所以它是一个非常，它不是划分界限的空间。所以，可是这种东西，呃，一般的政治很多东西它不需要，它是有冲突的。所以，我们。可以做什么呢？所以很 limited， 所以这个 topological 很难，难就是难在这个。可是你可以看到，现在有政府，对吗？有那些还是你还是有选举，还是有这种政治的东西。可是你也是有那个 terrorist attack 啊，然后他抓不到，他抓不到那些那些呃 terrorist， 对吗？你你这边把他抓了，哎，他这边又起来了，对吗？所以有一种。这个形式，这个东西是是存在的，或者你在网上有什么事情，你抓不到那个人，是无形的东西。所以这个 system 对我来说有趣，可是很难，可是很难，很难了解，很难。对。好，感谢森林老师今天的精彩分享和同学们的这个问题啊，也帮助我们把这个课题呢进一步拓展开来。啊，那再次感谢森林老师，啊，谢谢同学们。好，这个好，我们休息十分钟再回来。好，好再见。嗯，谢谢。拜拜。拜拜